Well, certainly an entertaining hockey game in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, for us, it was a tale of two games. I thought, you know, our first period was okay. Second period might have been as bad a period as we played all year. And, uh, you know, we talked in between the second and third period. We felt very fortunate that it was a 1-1 hockey game. And we had to make a decision. Do you want to play at 4 o'clock next Monday or do you want to play at 8 o'clock next Monday? And, you know, if we're going to be successful, we need to play with the pace. We need to be physical all the things you need to do in hockey, no matter what team you are. But, you know, I thought in the third period and the overtime, I thought we started playing the brand of hockey that we've been playing over the last month. And uh, obviously our goalie stood tall when he had to. Um, he was huge in the second period, made some big saves in the penalty kill in the overtime. And, uh, you know, just uh, really happy for our seniors. Uh, you know, they won it as freshmen, and I think another chance to win it as seniors. And, you know, one of the things that happened, and, you know, Brandon's done such a great job over the last month as a captain. I think our leadership really stood tall and, and took ownership of the third period in the overtime. And, you know, you can't have success or win championships without leadership. You know, there's a bunch of characteristics you need, and you need leadership. And, uh, you know, Brandon showed it, the seniors showed it, and they showed it you know, off the ice, and they certainly showed it in their performance. So just a great win. Happy for all our guys. and. Uh, it was a, certainly an entertaining night. Thanks, Coach. We'll just take maybe one question for each student athlete so we can move things along here. Jocko, get on the back thing. <clears throat> Thank you, Jocko. Connolly, Boston Herald. Uh, this is for Ty. Uh, can you take us through your game winning goal? And also, what's it like now to try to rest bragging rights from your dad? Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, I just got the puck and. I was going to make a backhand saucer pass, and Ty said, well, coach would have cut my head off. He would have been sitting here if he did that. <laughs> uh, so I just turned it up ice, and we've been talking a lot about beating guys down to the hash marks and taking the puck wide, so I just did that. And I just wanted to get the puck on net, because I know we've been trying to do that and get, get lots of shots in the goalie. I just got on net, and it, it went in, and it was, <laughs> it was a good feeling. But uh, no, my dad, he... He'd probably be like, oh, he'll probably be like, talk to me when you get knocked out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Ty. Do you have any questions for Brandon? Thanks, Brandon, while you got here. Just want to give us some thoughts on your game and, you know, match up with Northeastern next Monday. Uh, yeah, like Coach was saying, it was kind of a tale of two games. Uh, we were a really slow start, but Otter stood tall and kept us in the game and gave us every opportunity we had. Maybe we didn't deserve to be tied going into the third, but then um, the team kind of picked it up and started getting it down low and establishing some offensive zone play, which is huge. Started to wear them down a little bit. And then, um, you know, we just were doing the right things. And um, third period in overtime, and it led to a nice goal. So, you know, I'm really excited to be heading back to the finals. And Northeastern's a good crosstown rival, so it's going to be a lot of fun to go out there in the atmosphere and play against uh, a rival like them. So it's, yeah, definitely going to be a lot of fun. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Get some rest. Good luck next week. <coughs> Any questions for Coach Quinn? Uh, take uh, Chris in the back there. Chris Lynch, Inside Hockey. Coach, you've made a habit of playing these kinds of thrilling games against Harvard. How do you handle the uh, the pace of overtime on the bench when one play can, can finish it for either side? You know, at that point, it's in the players' hands. You know, once I uh, jokingly tell my friends when they say they don't want to bother me on game day, I say, that's the easiest day. I mean, I'm not doing anything. It's it's up to the players from here on in. As ben Smith likes to say the hay's in the barn, and you know obviously you're looking for your lineup chain, you know lineup matches, and maybe who's tired, who's not, and getting a feel on your bench who's going. But there's really not much you can do. It's you know you can't want you can't want it for them, and you know they've got to want to skate, they've got to want to play to pace, they've got to want to play physical, and those are the things that we harp on all the time in practice. And you know, I mean. I loved what I saw in the third period in the overtime, so I felt good about our chances. I certainly didn't feel good about our chances after the second period. Gary? Gary Santana, Gary Santana mm -hmm. New York Times. David, what do you, what do you think uh, is going through Jordan's head right now? He's going to miss out on a bean pot final, but obviously he's got something else to look forward to. I never know what's going through Jordan's head, <laughs> whether it's going Olympics or not. I feel like Dr. Phil coaching him. Uh, all kidding aside, he's, he's, we couldn't be happier for him. Uh, very proud of him. Uh, our guys are excited for him. We'll be following him closely. Uh, I'm sure there's a piece of him that wishes he could play in this Bean Pod final. Uh, but I think once he gets over there, it's all going to be about winning the gold medal. And, uh, you know, it, 
it's, uh, it's an exciting time for him. So it's unfortunate that the schedule doesn't allow him to play in the Beanpot final, but uh, you know, I think he's going to forget about that when he's over in the village and walking into the opening ceremony and you know, playing on national television and playing the Olympics. It's just an incredible opportunity. Charlie Wolfson, Huntington News. Um, what kind of challenge is Northeastern's top line of Sakura, Goodhead, and Stevens going to present next week? A lot. A big challenge. <laughs> you know, those guys are men. They play the game hard. They play it the right way. Um, you know, obviously we didn't do very well against them early in the season. I think we're a lot different team than we were back then. Um, you know, but there's more to that team than just that top line. I mean, they defend well. They got a great goalie. You know, they're one of the best teams in the country. And, you know, we'll certainly enjoy this tonight. we got a huge league game on Friday night. And we'll start really focusing on Northeastern after that, believe it or not. But uh, I know we're here in the bean pot setting. So we, we, we know what's in front. We know what the challenge is going to be next Monday night. Uh, you know, we're going to have to manage the puck. We're going to have to take away time and space. And, you know, we're just going to make sure we can minimize it. They're going to get their chances. We're going to make sure they're not of the oh, my God variety. We'll take two more for Coach Winifred out there. Coach Dave Sousa, WTVU Sports. You have a lot of young freshmen on your team, but you have a lot of seniors that have experience in overtime in the bean pot. What was said in the locker room between each overtime? Well, I think guys felt good going into the overtime because of what happened in the third period. They, they saw what you know, was allowing us to have success, and you know, I think they just thrived on that. I thought we even elevated it to another level in the overtime. I thought the overtime might have been our best period of the game. And, you know, again, we, only, you know, we possessed it, we used our points, we played a north-south game coming, up, coming out of our end, we didn't, you know, play slow in the neutral zone like we did in the second period. Um, and I think once, you know, once you start doing that, the, the games, when you have the puck, the game's not as tiring. And we looked tired and slow in the second period because we were chasing the puck all night long. The other part of it was face-offs. I mean, you know, it's been a problem for us all year because we don't have natural centers. And, you know, Greenway's not a natural center. Ty's played some center, but he's not a natural center. Phelps isn't a natural center. So, you know, we can struggle on face-offs. And I don't know what the final tallies were, but, you know, when the other team's, you know, winning every face-off, you're chasing it. And, yeah, they, they won 53, won 139. But I think we got a lot better as the game went on, which allowed us to possess it and not chase it all night. So I think our guys were confident going into the overtime because of the way that the uh, third period transpired. Any other questions out there? Some beauty sleep, Coach. Thank you. God knows I need. <laughs>